What's up, Brozones? Welcome to the Ozone, and welcome to another Game Theory reaction. Now, of course, we are reacting to the finale of the FNAF timeline today, and so, uh, <laughs> I thought for a special occasion we would, uh, do a group reaction. So, I'm here with Impulse Evan, Arcade Endo, and Psychic, and we are going to be reacting as a group, so let's get onto it right now. Uh, welcome to a, a group Game Theory reaction. I'm Psychic. I'm Evan. <laughs> <laughs> that was a really awkward Hello. pause. And then we also have uh, Arcade Endo here. <laughs> uh, we're watching the finale of, of Game Theory. Yeah, um, the, the finale of Game Theory? Of his FNAF timeline. Yeah. Which that, is, that's the one, that's the one. Everyone knows that Matt Pat Game Theory is um, now, the only correct yeah. theorist. This is this is God. going to be the final game theory because everybody is going to kill Matt Pat for it. Real, oh. that's true. I've heard not yeah. so good things about it so far. It's really okay. long. Should we, what the hell? Should we yeah. should we start with the disclaimer that we like Matt Pat and our and our yeah. uh, if we disagree that it's not uh, because we dislike it's not him? Personal. Yeah. Yeah. If you attack yeah. someone, it, it's very personally fun. because the, you don't like the theory. <laughs> you're a garbage human being. Okay. Love yeah. True. You. True. Facts. All right. Let's go. Wow, okay. <laughs> Hello, Internet! Welcome to Game Theory! And the final Hello. part of my FNAF timeline, where today, we're bringing our story to a close by talking about the most complicated and controversial part of the timeline. The part that I've been dreading most of all, the end. The moment where we're finally forced to come to some definitive and difficult answers trying to explain what the heck yeah. we were watching in Security yeah. Breach. The last two episodes have been about death. The death of Afton's family, the deaths of multiple children, the death of the franchise itself as Mike and Henry figuratively and literally burn it all down. Today's episode though, and the current end of this franchise, is instead all about rebirth. The return of old characters in new forms, and the controversial oh, no. rebirth of the franchise <laughs> entering the next era of its story. But before we hop into the timeline, due to scheduling conflicts, I won't be able to have any live talk back after this episode. I know, I promised one, I was really excited about it, but I just couldn't make it work with my schedule and all the other guests' schedules. That said, I still do plan on doing one over the coming weeks with special guests, just uh, make sure that you're subscribed and either have all notifications turned on or you're just watching our community tab for the announcement as to when that's gonna happen. And now without any further we should ado, be the we guests. finally reached the end and a new beginning to our story. Should be us for real. We really should. Oh, purple guy. Fazbear Entertainment. Was oh, dead. here's the FNAF no three sound. For you to return to work next yes. week, as Fazbear Entertainment is no longer a corporate entity. All debts had been paid. All assets redistributed. The company was outright dissolved. Even the memories. I love the way he does this narratively. What happened there started to fade away in the public consciousness. The people Damn. were gone too. William was dead. Henry was gone. A whole generation of young Emilys and Aftons had lost their lives to the horrors of the pizzeria. All of them collateral damage to the man in the bunny suit. Everyone the company had ever touched was dead and gone. Well, all except one. Pay your child support, you deadbeats! I'm keeping the diamond ring. I also set the what? house on fire! Uh, Clara Afton. She'd been there in the early what? days. What? <laughs> <with laughs> wait, wait, oh, wait, pause, pause. Oh, okay, okay, pause, okay. pause, pause it. Pause. First of all, we he's calling her in. Clara. We're calling her Clara now. Okay. Oh no. Um, I have a question. So, Why is she named Clara if Afton's not called Vlad? <laughs> True. I mean, Why does like, everyone say that? Everyone says her name is Clara. Name. <laughs> I guess so, but like... We don't have... Yeah. Sure, sure. Um, it's like Evan F. So Why, call... Why... Why didn't he call the bite victim Evan, though? That's the thing. Shut up. My question... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> My question is... In the Patient 46 tapes... Thank you. Thank you. Uh, th they say that... That was uh, actually the mother, Vanessa's, but... The Bill's wife, or whatever, did something after the custody case, and that's very connected to the Aftons, right? So... Given the fact that it was, like... It, it cut out... Given it, the fact that it was bleeped out, it, yeah, it, it, it seems... It was, it was, it was um, self-unaliving. Yes. So, she is not alive... Also, she would be too old at this point anyway. Like, she would she would be dead. Let's be real. Here's, here's what I think he's going to say, though. He is going to say... This is a, this might be a stretch. Remnant. He's going to say that this is connected to the post-it note room of the Afton family sitting around the table 
and that is why the Afton family is there because she was responsible for. Wasn't the mother it. also at the head of the table? Maybe we shouldn't be predicting yeah. what he's gonna say, and we should just be watching. Let's watch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, let's <laughs> watch. Business, the ideal family, but shortly after their youngest son died, things started to change. William had become distant, lost in his work, obsessive. She had watched him change from this irritatingly brilliant man that she had fallen in love with to a drunken monster struggling to hold himself together. And despite her trying to reach out to him in those desperate days, he was just too far gone. Reverb movement. Didn't he already play this song in a previous in a previous video? <laughs> yeah. He did. <laughs> For her sake, she had to leave the relationship. And from there, she largely faded into obscurity. A mystery but from William's come past. Back? A footnote in his yeah. history. And that was fine. And how is she, she alive? To it's, she's like a hundred. She tried to move forward. Never wanted to hear the name Freddie Fazbear again. A time defined by mistakes and broken promises. <laughs> okay, real. But then, the paperwork started to arrive. As Fazbear Entertainment began to close as a corporate entity, suddenly her mail was flooded with notifications, requests, obligations. She had been there since the Could beginning, be helping could William she be in the early Afton. days of his business, and now as a shareholder and Mom sole Afton? living member of the Afton Mother family, Afton. all copyrights Afton. and trademarks of both Afton Robotics and Where's Fazbear Michael alive? Question mark. passed on to her. Memories of this past life that she had long left behind. Looking at the blueprints, the contracts, the memos, she felt old wounds begin to reopen. The regrets of a happy family that so had been she born away. Further from. opens William them. Like what? Been brilliant. That's what had attracted her to him in the first place. But he'd also been too blinded by obsession and pride he was too jealous too petty too unable to actually see a bigger picture but now holding the paperwork that contained decades of heartbreak and trauma she realized it was her turn she was holding the power what? this was her chance what? and one what? thought resonated in what? her head i will put them back together Are you i will put me? them what back together. <laughs> no. she would be where is this coming from though family, to rebuild the pieces of, this? of that yeah where does this come he from the kids that he said this bear would be controversial <laughs> Wow. He did. Looking work now laid out before her, she knew that he the had been The narrative is okay, but there's no evidence. Robotic right. humanoids, digital I, don't, I wouldn't even argue the, the, the narrative is okay, because she's like a hundred. Fragmented. Sucks. It was almost like there were too many ideas going in too many different directions. It was such an important idea that she reiterated that point to herself. There were too many ideas going in too many different directions. That said, there had to be Like in this video. Them. She just yeah. needed to put it all back together. <laughs> but how? To rebuild her family, she would first need to <laughs> rebuild the franchise that had yeah, yeah, yeah. Give it a chance. Maybe With ownership over the characters, their licenses, I'm the waiting if he just doesn't explain at the end. She then. converted the corporation <laughs> back to an LLC, a structure for smaller businesses that are usually family owned. <sighs> The irony was fitting. From there, okay. shouldn't he say that it was Elizabeth in that video that he just Remnant cited? Was the key. Clearly, in the later know. years of his life, William had been using Circus Babies Entertainment and Rentals as a remnant farm, sending robots to kids' birthday parties in the hopes of nabbing bits of the stuff here and there. But clearly, it I wasn't enough. This. He had what, like four, maybe five animatronics going out every week? No. It was a decent idea, but to get the remnant they required, it needed scale. Dozens, hundreds of animatronics well, all out are. there, all gathering remnant yep. from unsuspecting customers but to do that would require help something William and I mean we do do that in William um, had kept everything in uh, uh, infinite the we with control limited him. yeah Clara though she wasn't nearly that precious a plan like this required partners people outside yeah, of Fazbear exactly. to do the heavy lifting so she contacted right, this, this mid-sized delivery one. company DLZ shipping solutions to help build replicas of all yeah. the original yeah. animatronics yeah. and with yeah. real delivery apps being all the rage why not an animatronic delivery didn't he say that they are not to celebrate your birthday your Halloween party how about a fourth of July He's gotta picnic. make up his mind a little bit. Liberty Chica and Fourth of July Freddy on over. She would make sure he made skins for every occasion. Chocolate Bonnie's for Easter, Shamrock <laughs> Freddy's for St. So Patrick's Day, Dia de los like Muertos Chicas. <laughs> and like thus, he literally the said Fazbear that, yeah. Funtime Service was born. That's right. With the Fazbear it's Funtime Service. It's Markiplier. Markiplier. <laughs> You'll always have some Yo. watching your back. Was it ridiculous? Absolutely. Was it a sellout? 
No doubt. It was exactly the sort of thing that William would have hated. But it needed to be done to get enough remnant. Normally, the novelty of ordering an animatronic wore off after, like, what? Why would William actually times? hate that, though? But with new skins True. for new holidays, suddenly you had yourself an animatronic perfect for this every occasion. It would dream. keep people hooked. It would keep them ordering the latest and greatest <laughs> that Fazbear Entertainment LLC had to offer. And all the while, they'd be collecting and returning the remnant back to her. In a word, it was brilliant. There was just one problem with it. No one trusted the Fazbear name. The company's brand was still mud in the public eye. No one would want to hire animatronics from the restaurant franchise known for murdering yeah. children. I, but like, party he, quite like the, the animatronics in AR are possessed so by Glitch Shop, so Vyar kind of has to happen first. The stories that had come before. Like, she needed to win to back the public's affections, reactivate some nostalgia for the spooky stories of their child. Yeah, why does it have she to be her? I don't know. When she's Multiple literally games, dead. In fact. They lied to us. They lied to all of us. They told us that the whole point of this VR game was to undo the bad PR done by a rogue indie game developer. But that's not true at all. Those indie games were designed to conceal and make light of what happened. This isn't just an attempt to rebrand. It's an elaborate cover-up. Struggling game developers were a dime a dozen online, most working on their magnum opus between shifts at the Dollar General. So she found one. Steve just picked him out of obscurity, the right mix of desperate and doofus willing to say and do anything for a couple extra bucks. And he fell right in line, as expected. Not really. He's kind of coerced. Things with dumb generic names like Mangle's Quest, Balloon Boy's Air Adventure, Five <laughs> Nights at Freddy's. Bad gameplay with even Ugh. worse graphics, but hey, they got the job done. People were suddenly talking about the clues inside of these things, searching for the hidden lore. They were actively making jokes about dead kids at pizzerias. Her husband's twisted history of serial murder had suddenly been reduced to a mere Nancy Drew mystery to be solved. The plan had worked. Freddy Fazbear's was suddenly more popular than ever. Things were going shockingly well. Her takeover and reboot of the franchise was full and complete. I Suddenly sure. infused with cash, she built the largest, most ambitious project yet, the Mega Pizza Plex. William had always been mm -hmm. so visionary, but always thought so small She scale. built it herself. Careful to a fault. <laughs> yeah. Not her, though. She knew that this latest project <laughs> was kind of big. It needed to be <laughs> In Minecraft. It needed to be a palace Cup of tea for exe children, is actually Mrs. that got people talking and checking out the latest in Fazbear <laughs> products. So with a steady supply of remnant flowing in, it was finally time. The stage was set. It was time a to get to a real goal. Of remnant flowing in what? A family. Oh God. Mark. It, this okay, is okay. I, I just okay, disagree okay, with okay, okay, Mrs. Afton. Okay. The only reason is Mrs. Afton because I think he's like I don't know who else to put here. Like that's literally the only reason, and I don't think that's a very good reason. You could just say Michael's still alive, or you could say it's someone random that just wanted to restart the company because reasons. Yeah. It like could just be a we, it doesn't knows about remnant. And they'd be like, oh, I want to do it myself. Yeah. So, hmm, predicting what he's about to say, I'm pretty sure it's like, it, it makes, it does make narrative sense for it to be the case. But again, like, there's nothing in the games to signify this is the case at all. Unless you say, think so I'm it, Afton is like Mrs. Afton. But he hasn't even brought that yeah. up. Yeah. But that's not even I like mean, that's not a name. <laughs> like, why would it be like? Why would that be the case? I don't uh, know. Okay, what the, I would the, okay. The here's what I would say. Like here's what I would say. Is Afton on the live? The thing, the thing about the tape. Yeah, what's the thing about the tapes? No, you go. You, you, you go ahead. Okay. Well, wh what I think is his entire like the beginning of the timeline was entirely based around the idea of William witnessing something as a kid and wanting to recreate it. So why can't that just yeah. be the case for the Pizzaplex? Right? Like, wouldn't that make just as much sense? I guess. Mm. Yeah, and the whole thing about Mrs. Afton being it, no, because, the, I mean, the, the, the tapes, uh, the CD, sorry. Mm -hmm. They make it pretty obvious that Mrs. Afton unalived herself. Right. Mm -hmm. I think that's a yeah, crucial I, thing I, that I he's missing agree. out. Unless the backstory is a lie. Which, even if it, even if it yeah. was, she'd um, still be, like, at least like a hundred by no, now. No, no, no. I can help out with that. I can help out with that. Um, Vanessa's file was hacked into by supposedly patient 46. And so, um, because patient 46 is influenced by glitch trap, that means that it's telling the, the history of the Aftons because glitch trap is Afton, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it is Afton's story or it is, yeah, it's related to Afton. Yeah. So a hundred percent, when it says that the mother 
did something like that is relating to Mrs. Afton. Yeah, I think absolutely. Undeniably. Well, we got twenty it can't more be minutes else. of this, like, guys. And it's Bill, right? So it's pretty I, I, I want to know where he's going with this. I want to know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, me too. Let's see. Fun. I'm intrigued. The first was obvious. The crying yeah. child. Her little boy. The one that was the first to get ripped away from her. She'd seen down in his bunker that William had gotten very close to replicating okay, artificial humans using really? animatronic technology. You call that so close. that's exactly what she would do. I don't think that's very close, yeah. Round up using robotic parts. His shaggy brown hair, his favorite striped oh, shirt. Shaggy and down small details that no one would notice. <laughs> shaggy. Band-aid on his left knee. Oh. William's research had even found ways of making animatronics that could bleed. Why would she be the one to make making it? them virtually indistinguishable from a typical human. He would never have any idea of what he actually was unless he was explicitly told. The only things that could possibly ruin the illusion were any overrides to his internal systems. If something were to say, interfere with the cameras that he had in his eyes, or cause some sort of a core reboot to his hard drive, or x-ray his metallic bones, then yeah, he would be exposed. But otherwise, to the outside world, he was just your typical normal human boy. She worked down Who in the bowels of the pizza plex giving him life. <laughs> yeah. Thing to build him was another to help him remember his identity. Mm. He died so, there we young, go. so early in their history that there was no preserved memories for him. No documentation that she could just download into his digital brain. So bit by bit, she trained him, forcing him to remember who he was. In a corner of the room, she even made a makeshift dinner table, a reminder of their yeah. happier days. The family <laughs> was a genius. two brothers, <laughs> I sister, called it. a father, you and called a mother it. at the head of the table. The one in charge, the one Not in man. command, the one bringing all of this to fruition. But his in order to like train him, why would she, she would have liked. literally first, give him no head? Simple ones and zeros, <laughs> then rudimentary drawings and crude letters. But bit by bit, images of his past Yum. life started to come through. Balloons, colors, houses, bears and faces, birthday parties, all for me. Gregory was alive. As the robot boy embraced her, she felt a warmth. I think this could be the case, this, except without this Mrs. Aspen. the joy yeah. that she'd been working Yeah. <laughs> this was what it was all for. Her son, back in her arms again. Because it sounds good. It sounds plausible. Can you pause it for a second? Aspen, the family was true. Can you pause it for a second? Okay, so an idea that I had was, what if, um, say, Michael built Gregory, because that like the code is in his room, so if if that does mean that Gregory's a robot, wouldn't it yeah. be make more sense that he would have made it? And also, yeah. Michael's yeah. Michael's room is in the Pizzaplex, right? So, um, is it possible that maybe they found Gregory in there and just didn't have a use for him, so they I, threw him down there? I I totally agree because like who's like as I said before, who's to say that this is Mrs. Afton and not Michael Afton? Because yeah, sure exactly. Michael Afton could do all of this, right? Um, because yeah, and it would make sense because like. Somewhere. Yeah. What? Um. Just you said Michael's room. I think earlier in another theory, he said that that was actually not Michael in the chair. It was like Mrs. Afton and Midnight Motorist, which is. I I bet I bet he's gonna use that um, theory of his to support this evidence. I bet. Maybe. Yeah, but like th that room that, in yeah, sister location Michael's is literally room. the in, is oh. literally the one that we see in Security Breach. So it's it is Michael's room. <laughs> so. Yeah. That's just, I, um, but yeah, they could just, you could just say that they had no use for Gregory when they found him in that room, so they just threw him down into the sewer, and maybe he just became aware on his own, or with the help of, like, another robot that's also down there. Thing is, there's something on my mind, guys, and it's three letters. G, 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 -G -Y. And Y. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, the story G, G, Y kind of debunks this, I think. Go I don't know if it debunks it, but it's... Basically, this is basically the case. Yeah. Let's continue. Yep. Let's continue. gonna be put together. She would need him, and she knew exactly where he was in the ruins of that old Freddy Fazbear's pizza place where Henry had trapped him. In fact, that's specifically why she insisted on building the pizza plex there over the sinkhole. It's the best place to hide what her true intentions were with the entire operation. Digging through the wreckage, why is she just evil she now? He was right where she thought he'd be. <laughs> Seeing the putrid shell yeah. of the spring trap suit, though, was not something she was prepared for. The rotting corpse of William Afton was disgusting. Scorched flesh fused into the fur lining. Hollow black <laughs> sockets where eyes once were. That's a a smell that job. reached of burned carbon <laughs> and bloody iron. The after he was no out. longer <laughs> Flesh. It was just the tangled Funny. sinews of a creature you know, that was I just kind of realized something. Human. Can you pause it again for a second? <laughs> I have another Oh my gosh, that. Evan. Please. I'm sorry, but I have something else to say. He he says that that this all happened with Steve. Um like after FNAF 6 had already like been burned down, right? 
but that's but that doesn't make sense if security breaches in 2035, which is where, what he's saying, because in Help Wanted, it said that it was the last few decades, meaning it was like at least like 20, 30 years, right? So that can't really be the case because Steve would have had to been would have had to have been if security breach was in 2035 then steve would have had to been uh like recruited like earlier in like the 2000s or something like that who freaking knows at this point <laughs> okay sure okay move on now Anne had fallen. It was clear that her work was cut out for her on this one. Afton was practically lifeless. The man may not have been able to die, but he was about as close as you could come. And his body would need a lot of reconstruction. Replacement arms and endoskeleton reinforcements were the top priority. Maybe pulled from their new line of glam rock animatronics. She'd and have to see if they had any claws. spare Bonnie parts lying around that they could steal. In the meantime, though, she threw the husk that was once her husband into a life support pod infused with aerosolized remnant to help keep him stable. But more important than recovering his body was recovering his mind. In his current state, he was comatose, an empty shell. Severe brain damage starts at temperatures over 108 degrees Fahrenheit, 42 degrees Celsius, and years of repeated fires had okay. burned his brain to goo. Gone was the brilliant, frustrating mind that had drawn her to him in the first place, but she had a plan. Unlike her darling boy Gregory, Afton had found ways to record his consciousness. Fundamentally, the brain is only a series of electrical connections after all, so why couldn't you replicate that in the form of a standard circuit board? In essence, you could create a digital consciousness. And one thing she knew about William, he was nothing if not cautious. A planner, someone who had backup plans to his backup plans. And sure enough, there it was, buried in Batman. piles of old animatronic CPUs, a record of Afton himself. But she needed someone to Afton is Batman someone confirmed. Someone was definitely here during the night. It had to have been the client. I mean, they sent us that stuff in the first place with no explanation, told us to scan it, said it would expedite the process so we wouldn't hmm. need to program any pathfinding ourselves. Unlike the other games that she'd paid to have made in the past, this one had a different purpose. This wasn't about PR, it was about getting William back up and running, spreading his virus to the masses. You acknowledge that Fazbear Entertainment is not responsible for accidental digital consciousness transference, real-world manifestations of digital characters. She hired a new developer, Silver Parasol Games, to scan the boards and bring her husband into the system. And because of the immersive nature of VR, William's consciousness would be able to merge with the player, giving him a new body, a new agency. There was just one complication. Mm -hmm. Afton's hold wasn't as powerful as she had hoped. He wasn't able to gain complete control. Hello everybody, um, so I'm very sorry, I was interrupted in the previous clip, so unfortunately uh, I am no longer with everybody, but uh, I hope you enjoyed that kind of the first half with those guys. Uh, they're pretty cool if you want to go and see the full reaction that they did, uh, then you can go and check it out on Impulse Evans channel, it'll be in the description. But we are going to continue right here, I think this is where I left off, but uh, I might be completely wrong. Anyway, I think it's going okay at the moment like the only thing i'm really hesitant on is mrs afton and i think that's probably what most of the community is hesitant on um right now so we'll we'll continue and see where it goes Roll. the first trial run jeremy was so desperate to escape from his grasp that he sliced his own face off with yep. a paper shredder messy afton's followers were reluctant to say the least but it was the second attempt that looked like it had the potential to kill two birds with one stone enter vanessa Mrs. Afton wanted a surrogate daughter. Her what about darling tape Elizabeth would have been a young woman at this point if she had lived. And Clara wanted someone who wasn't Elizabeth, but could be just like her. Could she have just rebuilt her like Gregory? Sure, but she decided against it because she wanted an actual human mother-daughter connection. Mm -hmm. Well, that, and it would be redundant and narratively unsatisfying to have two robot kids in the same family. I mean, I guess, what could she but say? William had put I a like lot that. Of tools on the a family of robot kids, that would she be was narratively planning nice. On using them all. Plus, Elizabeth had always been so loyal to Daddy. It was time to give her a true. second chance, a true choice. And Vanessa seemed to be the perfect candidate to fill the role. Your dad's name was Bill. Your mm. dad didn't play fair, did he? He used to make your mum look bad in court. He manipulated Wait. You. I know your mum after she lost the custody. Hang on, hang on, hang on. I'm sorry. I like, I, as again, as we said at the beginning of the video, uh, no hate against Matt Pat, of course. He's doing an excellent job at this timeline. Uh, I know that I probably couldn't do better. I'm just pointing out kind of what my, my main criticisms with it. That's what I'm here to do as a reactor. Uh, and I, I'm a bit confused because he has said that the mother is alive, but he has just used that as evidence 
that the Afton family are using Vanessa, or Afton is using Vanessa as his daughter. Right? That's what he's saying, I'm pretty sure. Something like that. Either way, he's using it as evidence for the Afton family, but at that point he is nitpicking because it literally says, just now, he, he literally just played the clip that the mother did something. And, I mean, sure, maybe it isn't that she committed suicide, but that is very heavily implied. That describes her disappearance in all of the games. You know, like, it, I feel like Mrs. Afton doesn't have this big of a role, otherwise we kind of would have heard about her by now. Right, so I, I don't think, I guess she does appear like twice in Security Breach, but I don't think that's enough to say like she is behind everything. Anyway, let's continue. To, he might have more evidence for this, so. She started as a QA tester at Silver Parasol Games, a VR game development yep. company that was part of her plan to bring back William. But more importantly, Wait. Vanessa checked all the correct boxes. So Writing, she is Tape Girl? Blonde, green eyes with a fondness for flowers in the outdoors. Because I don't think she's Tape Girl. it was her daughter all over again. Except it wasn't just looks and personality. What really mattered was Vanessa's mind. Underconfident, coming from a broken home, motherless, able to be manipulated. Yes. She would do nicely. She would be the one to save mm. dear old daddy, just as the real Elizabeth would have wanted. I will make you proud, daddy. Good point. Testing the VR game, William's digital consciousness merged with Vanessa. Oh, sure, she fought, fragmenting Afton's code into a series of tapes hidden across so the she, game. So he's saying she is tape girl. To gain control over her life, but it wasn't enough. Mm. She was weaker than Jeremy. She was a thrall that, despite occasional moments of lucidity, had to obey. And with Vanessa, it was a two-for-one deal. She was getting a daughter back, yeah. but also I'm bringing her husband one yeah. step closer to reactivation. Mm. She just had to make sure that Vanessa was headed the right way. The reborn Gregory was an expert hacker. Oh, did you why? Nice. Being an Afton and a robot. Cool. So Clara had him keeping tabs on Vanessa. So he knows that Gregory is patient for trailing her therapy sessions to ensure the future Elizabeth was falling in line. If any of the therapists started to ask too many questions, they were promptly yeah. dismissed from their positions. Okay. And while Gregory kept tabs on Vanessa's personal life, Mrs. Afton made sure to clear a path for her professionally. With silver parasols collapse at the hands of the anomaly, she then had the possessed Vanessa bring the contaminated circuit boards to DLZ shipping and the Fazbear Funtime service. Right. More glitches, more yeah. remnant, more Afton. But it was her last move that was the best. In a true masterpiece of poetry, she brought Vanessa over to be chief security officer at the Pizzaplex. A true family tradition So he's saying that Mrs. Afton is CEO of And all it took was a recommendation from the top mm. as well as some emails marked for deletion. I sure, Vanessa like that. didn't have relevant experience for the job, but when it comes to directly from the CEO, does it really matter? Husband, son, daughter. A corpse, a robot, a human. All that was left was Michael. Poor, troubled Michael. The boy that killed her youngest. The one that would spend years trying to make his guilty conscience right again. A self-professed protector. While she knew she needed him to complete the family, something told her that the problem had already solved itself. Something had shifted when using Glamrock Freddy to excavate the oh, okay. pizza place. Oh, okay. Glamrock Mike. Or Glam Mike. For the first time when I cleared the path, I have I'm okay with the theory. It doesn't stand out to me as, a, like, the greatest of theories, but it's okay. Maybe it was the remnant that had coursed through Michael's veins. Maybe it was the spirit of Michael living on as a protector. But he was there, somewhere inside of Glamrock Freddy. I guess. I could feel it. And just like that, she'd won. She'd done it. Sure, there were still some kinks to work out, some final brainwashing of Vanessa, some rehabilitation of William, but they were there. Finally, all it makes narrative sense, especially with the ending screen Afton's of the three of them sitting with ice creams. Ending. I think that That's makes sense. Yeah. Ended. That's how it should have ended, had it not been for a few unanticipated Ooh. developments. For one, Where something Charlie, was just wrong. Charlie fits into this. Almost as if the entire building was haunted, possessed. Puppet True. plushies hiding on ceilings. Yes, the guardians. Places He's that they talking had no about earthly it. way of belonging. Staff bots with greasy tears down their eyes, acting like they In were being puppeteered by some sort of a nightmare. Even their sounds had the echo yeah, of nightmare. Yeah, they're the same sound. Past. I made a whole video on that, Marion. It was if you as want to go though see it. <laughs> a guardian spirit of the past refused to move on. As long as her husband was around, it too would linger. Only now, it wasn't just in one body, but it was in the essence of the building itself. She had seen stories of houses okay. built on burial grounds getting possessed by angry spirits, but she And that's why the puppy doesn't have tears in the blog, because be Charlotte real. is Then again, in a world of living blacks. spirit metal and mind-controlling glitches, who was she to be so judgmental? The whole thing was ridiculous. Why would this be the line that she refused to cross? After all, the Pizzaplex was 
was built over the burial ground of angry spirits, but it was the power cords that finally yeah, convinced her nice. that something was wrong. Suddenly, these cords were striped black and white, like the security puppet from generations ago. The very oh, foundations <laughs> of this place, the materials and wires that constituted it, were rebelling against her, against the Aftons, against the quest to bring them all together mm. again. And it was being helped by something else, something slithering through the building. Okay. Maybe they were connected, she couldn't be sure, but a blob of living wires could be heard oozing through the walls, stealing pieces and parts of the old animatronics showcased in Rockstar Row. She could only assume that it was a byproduct of all the that remnants theory's okay, collecting. That theory is okay, but From I Afton's think testing, she knew that both in the game and dark remnant existed. One of positive emotions. When they say about the, the vents making anguish, noises, I think anger, it's the mini music agony. then. Perhaps this, this thing was an amalgamation of all the darkest parts of the pizzeria's history. A collection of the hatred still housed inside these defunct endings. Uh, I, th I think the blob is as to do with the epilogues. It seemed to be harmless. Because the blob isn't the canon name. But Blood we know the canon name of Bone Trap now. It's the wildly. Even young Gregory, looking to punish the family that had been complicit cool in its horrible creation. <laughs> Little did she know, though, that Gregory should have been her biggest concern. That bringing the family together would have some unforeseen consequences. Gregory was normally the goodest of boys. Hey. Hey, here we go. Him that way. But lately, he'd been disappearing more and more often, disobeying her orders. <laughs> requests. She knew that he loved playing on the arcade machines once the Pizzaplex closed, being so good as to top the leaderboard on practically all of them. But lately, he was nowhere to be found. She suspected his absence had to do with Glamrock Freddy's failed performance the other night, when he malfunctioned live on stage, almost as though the core programming of Freddy responded to seeing this rebuilt small boy, almost like it awakened something inside of him. She'd have to make sure that Vanessa was on the lookout for him, but she'd soon come to learn that Vanessa wasn't enough. Whether it was the influence of the Nightmare Pub Puppet or a reawakened hatred of animatronics seated deep in Gregory's code, something had caused him to rebel. To rip apart each animatronic in the pizza plex. Bit by bit, this boy was tearing down the empire that she'd so painstakingly built. Freeing Vanessa from her mind control, destroying the remains of Afton in the basement, setting Glamrock Freddy loose. As her carefully created world crumbled around her one more time, she began to plot her revenge. She would have to bring them all to ruin. And there you have it, my friends. Nearly a decade in the making. Whoa. My FNAF timeline for okay. where the franchise is here in 2023. The year of Fazbear Frights, by the way. As always, it wouldn't yeah. be right for me to finish without going over some of the more controversial yes, please. that okay. I just handed out. Come I think on. we can all agree that this part of the timeline was always going to be the hardest. So let me just break down some of the major points. Yeah. First of all, the biggest swing of this episode, and obviously the one that everything Mrs. else Afton? rests upon, Mrs. Afton being Good. the CEO of okay. Fazbear Entertainment He's LLC. He's at least Here's it. why I went with this route. Now, first and foremost, the the head of Fazbear Entertainment is the single biggest mystery that we're meant to solve at this point in the I lore. don't the know about that. The ultimate guide brings it up repeatedly. Who's running the show? Who is okaying these decisions? And in the security Maybe. breach memos, we get multiple mentions of someone manipulating things from the top down. Whoever this is, Love they history. are the person driving forward every other facet of late stage FNAF lore here. They're the puppet master who's hiring the indie dev. They're the ones relaunching the brand, building the pizza plex over the burial ground. So everything at the end of the timeline relies on but this is one from before. Now, I don't as I think see it, it is. There are two possibilities here. One, like I said, it could have been Michael. Elizabeth, like, like we see older versions of robot kids in the fourth closet, or Mrs. Afton. Could it be someone completely new to the franchise? Absolutely yes, but in a game with so many yeah. returning faces and repeated themes, it would be pretty random and arbitrary. So, between these two girl bosses, mm. who then would it be? Well, Elizabeth always wants to please her daddy, so she'd be most likely wanting to bring him to life. But then, what's Vanessa's role in all of this? Vanessa is clearly meant to be a parallel for Elizabeth. Same hair, same eyes, similar backstories. But if the that main is goal not the same hair, Matt, but the family back together, <laughs> I get what you mean, though. clearly be the case in Security Breach, then there's no need for Vanessa to be involved at all. We already have Elizabeth running the show. It would also mean that we suddenly that have two robot kids running true. around, which feels narratively repetitive and, quite frankly, I feel like you're thinking too hard about it, Matt, but I, I don't think it's that important to Outside know. of any clues that we can get from Immortal and the Restless and Ballora's song. But what her being head of Fazbear does is make every other piece of the lore fit. Suddenly, you can have one of every other type of character. One robot kid in Gregory, one brainwashed human in Elizabeth. I somewhat agree, Vanessa, but you're definitely OG overlooking William, things. And one possessed animatronic in Mike. Narrative, Which is like, it makes let me pause. Else cleaner. I, like, as I say, he's definitely overlooking things, but I expect that. Like, he, Matt Pat isn't going to make the perfect theory. Nobody can make the perfect theory, I don't think. Uh, unless it's Scott, of course. But, like... Of course he's overlooking things. I'm, I expect that of him. Um, not, not because... 
he's a bad theorist. No, like he's really good. He's really smart. I wish I was as smart as Matt Pat. Honestly, he is so amazing. He's like a great inspiration to so many people, including myself. But he is overlooking things and that is undeniable, okay? Because of the Patient 46 tapes. And it just, I don't, like it does make narrative sense, but in terms of the evidence, there is not enough to put that all together. Um, so I love, I, I love the idea, okay? I think that the, the idea has merit. I just think that it is not what Scott has intended for the games, and I think that's fine. Like, it's okay. And, like, what he's saying here is good, okay? He is putting a lot of things together. He's picking up on the parallels. He's picking up on stuff from the books kind of loosely, I would say. Like, there's a lot with Gregory here that he has missed, I think, that could have been more important to this video. Um... But I think overall he's doing a pretty good job. Um, but yeah, he I, I think he's definitely missed a few things which was expected. So there you go. Legally, it's also the option that makes the most sense. As I call out in my narrative, she'd likely have some stake in the original company and all but of its so assets. Would so as Fazbear Mike, folds mm, as a company, I, I suspect a lot of it would return back to her. But there was one clue that really sold me on this particular direction, and that was this right here. In the post-it room, the big lore central of Security Breach, a dinner table scene with the whole family, yeah, including That was my original thought when he said there, Mrs. She is at the head of that table, the position of highest honor and responsibility she is the one in charge with William being relegated off to the side. That one scene shows that we have to include mom in there somewhere, and the only place it makes sense for her to be is at the top. Now, there is one big dilemma with my but interpretation it's a Christmas of all this. The ultimate okay. guide really I seems talk to about point that. out that the head of Fazbear doesn't want the glitch <laughs> Too complicated. virus to spread. They call out one particular email in FNAF AR where the legal team calls a cease and desist to all yes. action about scanning the circuit boards. Mm -hmm. And even in FNAF VR, we're told that the circuit boards get stolen back by the client. Client, presumably once they realize what danger is on there. Trying to stop Glitch Trap before he spreads and gets out of hand. Right. Here's the problem with that though, if the head of Fazbear doesn't want Afton to rise again, why'd they restart the company in the first place? Why'd they build over the FNAF 6 pizzeria? Why'd they go through an elaborate cover-up to make the possessed Vanessa an important part of the company? Just so here's the thing, who's to say that it isn't Afton himself? Afton is now... Never mind, I just realized my flaw with that sentence. <laughs> um, I was about to say it could be a glitch trap possession thing, but they haven't scanned the the circuit boards yet. <laughs> I, I do feel like the CEO of Fazbear Entertainment probably is possessed by glitch trap. Maybe, I don't know, like I guess the point of contention here, like the thing that needs to be discussed and solved is like, what exactly is happening with these circuit boards and how exactly Afton went from FNAF 6, Ultimate Custom Night, to VR. I think if we can kind of solve that, then a, a lot of other things will fit in. Uh, obviously, like, there's, there's very, there's good theories out there for it. But like, what he's saying here is, is true. Like, that is kind of core to a lot of this. It's like, who is... Who isn't who ha who was the client, right? And once we know that, I think a lot of pieces will fit in. I don't think it's Mrs. Afton. I'm like, I'm really sorry. I I hate disagreeing. Like, I really want to believe him, and I really want him to be correct. Um, but like, I I just feel in my heart that like it's it's not. <laughs> uh, I I just think that there's probably other options here. Um. And I also feel like Security Breach is actually kind of setting up a new sort of story. So why bring back Mrs. Afton? And in this case, why bring back all of the other characters too? I feel like like Gregory looking like the crying child is just kind of a reference, a parallel to show that they're kind of related narratively rather than actually physically. So I have a feeling like they are connected in a figurative way. Um, but it's not necessarily the crying child because we know in in GGY that like Greg is a regular regular kid with an actual family um, and goes to school and stuff. So he he is like a, a regular kid. So I don't know. I, this is like it's really difficult for me to gather my thoughts on this because there I have a lot of thoughts. Um, but 
I think he I think he's doing okay with it. He's got the right idea. Just it's it's about like precision and accuracy, right? They are two different things. It, when you're precise, you are kind of in the right spot. Wait, no. No, no, no. When you're precise, you're aiming loads of things, but you're not in the right position. When you're accurate, you're in the right position, but there's a lot of spread. I think <laughs> maybe it's the opposite, but like he is kind of um I don't know, I don't know how to put it. I'm I'm trying to come up with something. Like he's kind of like just off, I think. Like yeah. I, there, yeah. <laughs> Let's finish this video. Make a whole lot of sense. It would be the most inconsistent series of actions ever, but I did want to call attention to it since it seems to be the route that the official guide is trying to steer us towards. Moving on I to guess. minor point number one, the Five Nights at Freddy's games were made by the rogue indie developer. Here's the thing, FNAF VR okay. opens well, we know this, this line. That's why we have recreated many of these completely fictitious scenarios, yeah. lies that you've been lies. fed over the last several years into a, a hilarious VR game. game. It's recreating the lies told to you by the indie developer. Yeah. And since Help Wanted has direct recreations mm. of FNAF's one through three, it means the games must be part of the fabrications that this developer made up. Also, all of this is heavily implied oh, in the story right. of the same name, yeah. Help Wanted and Tales of the Pizza Plex. Hence, FNAF one through three canon games within the lore of the series. Big swing number two, the elephant or ghost in the room, Charlie infecting the Pizza Plex. John from the channel FNAF has made some great of the, yeah. about Charlie's influence yeah. over the pizza plex, the cables that look like the striped arms of the puppet, the nightmare own plushies that you find hidden there's a lot the pizza plex with the in puppet, places, the and I love it. With creepy smiles and the fact that the puppet doesn't have tears. Front, all of these things scream puppet. Yeah. Plus, with the puppet mask not having hey. tears blob, seems to imply that Charlie's spirit exists elsewhere. Yeah. She is still in I agree. Puppet, People said that she's moved role, on, but I don't think she's moved on. Not at all. Post -it room. There's the too much to the puppet stuff. Room in the game's code are called Charlie Door. Yes. And inside, we see a bunch of up nightmare staff bot heads. Suspicious, to say the least. The channel ID Fantasy did a great theory looking at the post ID! that the crying child slash I'm Gregory friends with ID. alone in this room, but rather might be communicating with someone. A spirit Charlie. I did not Charlie realize you were referenced in this video. Nice one. <laughs> Instead of controlling one thing, she's affecting a lot of little details. Let's, Let's do a theory video together. The and this isn't the first time that we've seen this in the franchise either. We've seen spirits communicating with people through physical writing in the survival logbook. So we know that this is an established means of spirit communication within this franchise. And yeah. I suspect that to some extent it might be Charlie's influence making Gregory go haywire. Which brings me then to my final and probably biggest controversy in recent FNAF history, Gregory, Gregory is patient, patient 46. 46. The yep. evil robot mastermind. Now, I know when I first came out with this theory a year ago, people were mad. But here's the thing, you don't have to take my evidence points for it anymore. The recent <laughs> Tales from the Pizza Plex yeah. story GGY basically goes and just I'm glad. proves I'm glad he's in GGY, this out. we find out about a boy named Gregory who's getting all the high scores in the Pizzaplex arcade machines. When therapists start to go missing, it's confirmed that GGY is the one that's working to bump them off. And when animatronics start getting corrupted by a mysterious glitch, GGY's letters are found inside the yeah. code. He even chooses the code name Dr. Rabbit for crying yep. out loud. But obviously because by the he's time possessed. the security Chocolate breach, trap. Gregory is working against Burn Trap, Vanessa, and the animatronics. Because he's not possessed Why? How? in well, security breach. Well, it's not really clear. I tend to believe that something Bloom must have world. happened to cause him to either lose his memory or be reset in some way. Maybe it was Charlie talking to him in his post-it room. Maybe he sure about Charlie? Maybe it was the connection like, that he made with Mike on why stage Charlie? in Glamrock Freddy. Not exactly sure, and I don't no, think we that happens right to before solve any of it yet. But it makes sense from a story perspective why he'd start off Wait. evil on Afton's yeah, side and then switch to trying to destroy him and not knowing who he is in Security Breach. And with that, my friends, I'm wrapping this thing up. Congratulations, we are on page 40. Wow. 22,000 words of FNAF, baby. Practically just wrote myself a Tales of the Pizza Flex <laughs> short story. Have I answered everything? No. Does everything fit cleanly? No. But does it feel like the best and most cohesive narrative for all these characters that addresses most of the evidence we're given? Yeah. For me, honestly, it really does. And let's be honest with ourselves, the DLC will probably come out later this uh, year and prove I think it's okay. Wrong. Wouldn't be the first time. Then comes the movie, whatever. My descent into madness continues. But regardless, I am so proud of this. This was a massive undertaking. And I'm so Congratulations. proud of our editors who have just destroyed yeah. the editing across all four of these installments. You guys are the best. Thank nice you for one. pushing through on on 20 plus minute uploads you are unreal and your talent is unrivaled i'm so lucky to work the with editing is amazing day. and like i mentioned in before keep an eye videos. on the channel for an announcement regarding a talkback live stream with some yep. special guests was i right was i wrong i want to hear okay. your feedback okay very interesting so he's brought up a lot of good points i think and as i said i think he's just a little bit off um 
overall thoughts on the timeline. Let's do that. Uh, I only have a few minutes, so he is he's done a good job overall. Okay, obviously when he makes videos, he goes for the theories that seem like they are the best content rather than uh, theories that he thinks are necessarily correct. And I like the way he does that. Um, I think that the whole team do a really good job of making those kind of theory videos. Uh, when it comes to FNAF, a lot of people are like, evidence, evidence, evidence. You need evidence for this. You need proof. You need a uh, something to kind of contradict this, right? Um, but the way that MatPat takes it is very different. And that's why a lot of... Um, a lot of people online attack him wrongly, I must say. Um, so, like, I, I love how he built this, like, over a narrative. As long as people don't take this as 100% fact, this is okay. Like, I, I, I like this. This is a good narrative. It's it's just, like, I, I hope that people don't look at this like it is true. <laughs> because I, I think that he is he is just off. He's He is, he is off. Um, he is inaccurate. So, there you go. There are my four reactions to these videos. I thought they were really cool. Um, I will probably talk about them more in the future, so make sure you subscribe so you can see more of kind of like a breakdown, I guess. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.